Welcome back to the channel. I'm EZP40. Today's just going to be kind of a quick short video going over um, some things I wanted to go over for the past couple weeks regarding the weapon ranking series of uh, Call of Duty Zombies on my channel. As you know, some of you uh, know that I rank weapons. I've made weapon ranking videos for a while now, uh, for a few months. Um, and I've got a series going on and I plan on eventually making an entire video ranking every weapon from World at War to Black Ops 4. Um, I do want to go over a couple things today because there's been a couple things that I have not addressed, a couple things that I do want to address. So for starters, I want to just talk about uh, when it comes to the criteria, you guys know that I mainly go off of damage, ammo, rate of fire. Those are the three main important things, right? And whenever I talk about the criteria, I never really mentioned the overall efficiency and the damage per second because when I first started the series, that's not something I really took into account. I just took mainly just damage, ammo, and rate of fire. However, with the efficiency, like the overall efficiency and the damage per second, it's literally just taking those three uh, main stats and just combining them into two. And it's a much easier way to compare weapons when you just use those two. So in reality, it's still using the same criteria, but I want you guys to know that I am more looking into uh, the overall efficiency and damage per second, even though that isn't quite stated. Um, I want to clarify that now so that way you guys understand that. Also, there's a couple other things I want to go over today because I have been doing a ton of research this past couple of weeks um, because there's a couple things that I've just kind of been mixed on and a couple of things that I actually originally thought were true and they weren't and then vice versa it's been a it's been a mixed bag these past couple weeks whenever i've been researching the zombies info but the biggest thing i want to go over today is well explosive weapons my goal is to be a reliable source when it comes to weapons in call of duty zombies by fairly comparing the weapons side by side and taking their overall performance and determining what's better however to fairly compare weapons to each other they have to be consistent uh, they have to be similar to one another. They have to have the same tendencies, all that, right? As you guys know, I've banned a handful of weapons throughout this series, like the crossbow, the flamethrower, the ballistic knife, the Mauser, because they all don't shoot regular bullets. They shoot, uh, the Mauser shoots lasers. The crossbow shoots uh, crossbow bolts that aren't exactly normal because they're. it's more of a distraction, like a monkey bomb. The ballistic knife, obviously that's not a bullet weapon, and the flamethrower is not even remotely close to a bullet weapon, right? So this whole thing has been just about comparing bullet weapons to one another. But they just don't, they don't compare at all the bullet weapons, hardly at all, and uh, they have several different abilities and tendencies that just, it makes it impossible to fairly compare to the regular weapons. That being said, there's still one type of weapon that's been completely different from regular bullet weapons that have made their way into these lists. You guys know it, these are the explosive weapons. Um, the explosive weapons are extremely difficult to judge um, because their tendencies are far too different um, and as well as their overall statistics being just uh, completely inconsistent depending on you know the several different variables that they offer depending on what explosive weapon you have all the explosive weapons are very powerful to an extent um, while also having various drawbacks some more than others all of these attributes are very difficult to fairly determine considering how different the opinions are when it comes to the explosive weapons because I've seen plenty of people out there that say um, explosive weapons are incredible. You absolutely need them when you're going you know, into higher rounds using, you know, they're very, very helpful. Then you have some that just say, man, explosive weapons, don't bother with them. They're going to get you killed. Don't use them. And so because of that, it's been more about the opinions of explosive weapons than it is about the facts, which has kind of bothered me about that. Um, and after different discussions and, and a lot of contemplation on this subject, I have decided that the best way for me to proceed in discussing weapons on this channel is to split them up into four groups. Bullet weapons, which is just like ARs, LMGs, SMGs, all that kind of stuff. Non-bullet weapons, basically a, not a wonder weapon, but a weapon that is more of a regular weapon just doesn't shoot regular bullets it could shoot lasers like the mauser it could shoot fire like the flamethrower shoot crossbow bolts like the crossbow it can shoot grenades like grenade launchers and rocket launchers and stuff like that and then wonder weapons which are obviously like the thunder gun and the ray gun and then the special weapons which is like the ragnaroks and the i don't know the freaking gauntlet of siegfried from garage crowley basically what i'm saying is explosive weapons are no longer going to appear in the weapon ranking series However, I want to preface, I will 100% be going into full detail at some point 
one at some point or another it, it i'm going to go into detail regarding the explosive weapons so that way you guys get a better understanding of how exactly they work and all that kind of stuff because i do want to go over them but it's just so hard to compare them to regular weapons when i'm ranking all of these weapons because a lot of it has to do with my opinion on them and my opinion i don't want to take much into account with these lists I want to look at the facts and purely the facts, and I want to determine the list based off of that. I do not want to have a bias or an opinion when it comes to these lists because I just, I, that's not what I'm interested in when it comes to this channel. I want these, this list, this series especially, I definitely just, I, I want to put every bit of bias I have aside. And I'm not being biased towards any explosive weapon because, in all honesty, I personally don't care for explosive weapons, but some of them are really, really good. And do this criteria it's it's very hard to rank anyways later on down the line I will rank explosive weapons and eventually when that does happen I believe you'll see exactly why it's just not possible to compare them to the regular weapons when it comes to this series uh, especially with this certain criteria some of you might disagree and I do apologize for that but the more research I do the more I realize that this is the better way to give off information regarding the weapons not only that, but I believe this criteria highly benefits explosive weapons. Like I said, uh, it's just way more than bullet weapons. This criteria is kind of weird because like it's fit for bullet weapons. It was never my intention to make it so that explosive weapons could be at an advantage or a disadvantage. And when you look at them and you look at the facts that it provides, there's very good arguments to put them in the top slots and there's very good arguments to put them in the bottom slots. And it's really, 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 really difficult for me to determine a uh, an accurate spot for me to put the ex explosive weapons because every explosive weapon I have ranked in this entire series, I have not been comfortable with. I just haven't. Well, easy, you, you made the criteria, that's your fault. Hey, look, the reality is there's no perfect way to balance out both bullet and explosive weapons. Right? I understand. I made the criteria, but there is no perfect criteria when comparing bullet and explosive weapons. That's just something you have to realize. When it comes to this, it's very, very difficult to compare. I don't think this is like a perfect choice, but I do think it's the better choice moving forward when comparing weapons because I think overall we're going to figure out more about explosive weapons down the line. I think down the line I will have a better opportunity to really compare them and their small details to each other to really figure out uh, just how good some of these explosive weapons are and some of their you know drawbacks and whatnot because they are really really different from each other it's actually kind of crazy i hope you all understand why i'm doing this but uh before i get a question about this i'll just go ahead and say no i am not redoing the world at war black ops 1 and black ops 2 ranking videos some of you might ask that i'm not doing that Basically, number one, they'd be essentially the same thing, just remove the explosive weapons. Number two, the main meat and potatoes of the series is the final ranking. Everything that we've done so far has been kind of beta lists, like all these lists that you're seeing right now. It's just me learning and growing as, uh, as someone who is a player of zombies and learning more and more and more about these weapons, which I know a lot about these weapons, from a player standpoint, but there's so many minor details that don't get talked about. And the more I learn, the more I'm just so intrigued by making these weapons well known in the community because there's so much that doesn't get talked about. You guys have no idea the amount of research that I've done. It's some of the stuff that doesn't get talked about is absolutely insane. Like I said, what really matters is the final ranking, okay? I've been thinking about this sort of changed since I made the BO1 ranking. I will just straight up say, like, going into the BO3 ranking, because I think a lot of people are looking forward to that. I am redoing that. A lot of people wanted me to redo it because for this specific series, I said, hey, we have an old one, you know, that the one I made, that was my first Call of Duty ranking or anything like that. But that wasn't under the same criteria of the specific series. So I was like, hey, do you guys want another one under this specific series? And so far, pretty much everyone has said, yes, let's do it. So I do intend on doing that, and it's going to come out either later this month or early in February. I'm hoping for later this month, but I am really busy, so we'll have to see. I just want to tell you guys straight up right now, had I included in uh, the explosive weapons in that ranking, all of the explosive weapons probably would have made it into the top 10 under this criteria, which doesn't make any sense at all. Because everyone who has played Black Ops 3 Zombies knows the explosive weapons in that game, there's little reason to use them except for maybe the l4 siege and some of the easter egg runs and same with the x53 you know in easter egg runs fine they're good but my list 
are mainly off of the high rounds, not Easter eggs. And so for high rounds, putting all of them in the top 10, it, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. They don't fit the game well. The whole aspect of the explosive weapons in Black Ops 3, no one really uses them for high round games. The only time they're really used is, easy, is, is in the Easter egg runs. So that's why I'm just like, I, the more I look at them, I'm like, this, this has to change. Something's got to change. And this is the best way for me to do it is to talk about bullet weapons. Later on down the line, we'll talk about explosive weapons. There's a lot to go over. I don't want to like overcomplicate things, but I'm just telling you right now, this is a much better way to move forward. If that means we're making an explosive weapon ranking at some point in the future, I'll do it. That's fine. But I, I want to do that at a later point once I'm, you know, when I've, once I've got this whole bullet weapon uh, ranking series done and all that kind of stuff. Later on down the line, that's certainly a possibility. Prob more, more likely a probability than a possibility because it, it probably will happen. But overall, I think the biggest difference between bullet weapons and the non-bullet weapons is just the quality of bullet weapons um, are prim primarily based on facts, while the non-bullet weapons quality is sort of based on facts, but a lot of it is based on opinion because there's different opinions regarding the drawbacks of explosive weapons, and there's just a lot. Like I said, it's complicated. To me, this is the best way of moving forward. Uh, and I've been thinking about this for, at, what, like a good month, month and a half at least. Very, very confident in this move. I would like to know your opinion on this. If you'd like to comment, go for it. Now I want to go a little bit over mobility. So with mobility, right, usually how I determine mobility beforehand is I would look um, at the wiki stats, which is a, a main source that I use. For the most part, Wikipedia on weapons is actually pretty good. And usually I can use that as a decent way to figure out some of the stats that I need to know. So I hear some people say Wikipedia may not be fully accurate. And I agree. It's not always fully accurate, but it does get some stuff right. And I mainly get it with like the body damage is good for the most part. Um, the ammo it usually gets that right. All that kind of stuff. It usually puts the mobility on there and usually the mobility I would agree with. Um, and I always had this sort of like view on it that, hey, the mobility, it's fine. I've kind of felt it. It feels accurate. However, the more and more I've dove deeper into these weapons, the more and more I'm just like, you know what? Let me, let me try something. Let me try seeing if I can have a fully accurate way to determine mobility in game. Because I don't know if a lot of you guys know this. When I do research in the game, I don't have mods. I have an Xbox and that's it. I don't have mods at all. When I go and research in-game, I play the game. I start up the game, I load up a map, I play the game. That's how I that's how I do research. I grab a weapon, and what I do for mobility-wise is I will find a wall, all right? I'll find a two-side wall, one on this side, one on this side. What I do is I sprint forward, right? I sprint forward. It usually takes about three seconds or so for me to get from one wall to the other. What I'll do is I'll record it with my Xbox clips. I'll go back to the Xbox clips and I'll watch three different clips of that, right? I will rewatch it three times, basically what I'm saying. And what I'll do is when I start, I'll get on my phone and I'll use a stopwatch to see how long it takes to get there. And then whenever I do that, I'm able to determine how good mobility is the gun, right? So, for example, if a wall takes... Um, if a wall takes 2.72 seconds, right, then uh, you use, like, a, another gun, and it takes, like, 2.87 seconds, right? That 2.87, I don't know the exact number because I don't have a calculator on me, but it should be about 95%. And so when you do that, you're able to determine, like, hey, this, gun's ha this gun has a 95% mobility. And the 2.7 whatever is 100% mobility because it's, like, a pistol or whatever. It, it's... It's very tedious. I'll say that it's extremely tedious for the, like the past week. I've really dove deep into it and I've done a lot of weapons um, where I've just grabbed a weapon and I'll just go to a wall and I'll just sprint forward and I'll just do this research and then I'll try to go get another weapon. I'll go try to pack a punch it. I try to do a pack a punch because everything I do is pack punched. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is when it comes to mobility, the Wikipedia stats that I have seen on Wikipedia regarding mobility are mostly incorrect and that's a shame because i actually trusted those stats for most of the time that i've been making videos um so because of that i will i might make a mobility video at some point but i'll just want to say this straight up like i made a video a couple weeks ago regarding the ppsh uh the deep dive that was deep dive one ppsh 
And there was a couple of weapons I got incorrect with mobility because on Wikipedia, it says that when you peck punch the Draken, it goes from a moderate mobility to a high mobility. Basically what it's saying is it's going from a 95% mobility to 100% mobility when you upgrade it. That is not true. When you have an unupgraded Draken, it is 95% mobility. When you upgrade it, it's also 95% mobility. So it does not increase the mobility whenever you peck punch it. And the MG-08 is the same thing. The MG-08 is actually taken from Black Ops 2, and it's pretty much the same thing regarding uh, all the stats and whatever, except for um, it's slightly altered in some ways, like the ricochet effect is not there, and the stats are altered to fit Black Ops 3 style a little bit more. Like, the headshot damage is, like, slightly higher because, you know, the Black Ops 3 system is just a little bit different. Um, but the mobility of the MG-08 is supposed to be 95% when you upgrade it, right? Or at least that's what by wikipedia standards all L lmgs go from low mobility to a moderate mobility so basically it's saying it's going from 95 or it's going from 90 percent mobility to, to 95 percent mobility goodness i'm starting like crazy basically the lmgs in black ops 3 are all 95 percent mobility with or without the upgrades that's something that i don't think a lot of people know and i didn't even know that till recently right so the mg08 is the only one that isn't like that and because I think it's because it's taken from Black Ops 2 directly into Black Ops 3. So the, the mobility is the same as it is in Black Ops 2. And I believe it's an 88% mobility whenever you uh, whenever you have the MG-08. It's under 90%. I know that. It's not quite 90% mobility. Um, and this is honestly the same with or without the upgrades. You do not get an upgrade in mobility in Black Ops 3 at any point unless it's the rocket launchers, I believe. That's the only one that might give you a boost in mobility. I'd have to really look into it. I haven't looked as much into the rocket launchers as I have into the regular bullet weapons. But yeah, I've done a lot of research in mobility last week, and I'm just going to tell you, man, don't trust Wikistats. Uh, a lot of sources out there are incorrect in their mobility analysis, and I am very shocked to see what I have found, honestly. So, um, but I want to say that because I didn't want be able to see that in the video and then say hey the dragon has 100 percent mobility it's not true anything that i get wrong on this channel i want to retract immediately once i figure it out and i put that in the uh in the pin comments whenever i whatever i wrote i put that included with the pin comments anything i get wrong by the way let me know in the comments if you know i did something wrong put it in the comments and i will try to retract it as soon as i can because it's not about you know oh hey i i you know i got some wrong it's about you guys getting the correct information that's what it's about really I, I just i don't like giving you guys information that is not fully correct and the rule i honestly <laughs> the only reason i gave that information in that video is because i was 99 percent sure it was correct all off of feel but the thing is when it comes to feel on weapons you can feel weapons and you could be just completely off right the commando for black ops one one of the best feeling weapons in zombies Guys, it's not even close to one of the best weapons in zombies. And the more I feel something in zombies, usually the more wrong I am when I look at the facts. I'm sorry. It's complicated, guys. I have done so much research on this. It's There's a lot to go over, and I just don't want to go over all of it. But to put it as short as I can, because I don't want to keep here for 30 years, um, the mobility is something I'm really going to dive deeper into going forward because... I'm no longer going to trust outside sources with mobility. I'm going to trust my own sources and what I find in the game because a lot of those sources are incorrect. A lot of them. I was very, very surprised. And it kind of triggers me because, like, bro, how do you mess up this? I have no problem if you don't know the mobility statistics. That's not what I'm saying. My issue is these sources claiming these mobility statistics and being completely wrong. That's my issue. Like, bro, you guys have probably have mods and and all this kind of stuff and you're still getting this wrong it's 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 very very upsetting to me because as someone who does a lot of research i now have to rely on my own uh source just doing it on my own in game because i don't have mods right i have to figure this out in game on my own everything i do right damage mobility all that kind of stuff and it's like, I just, I don't know. How do you not figure this out with mods? I just, I don't understand. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of go over that real quick because I don't want people um, claiming that, oh, well, hey, you said this and it's not true. Yeah, it's not. I want to retract that. I want to make sure that's very, very clear. Anyways, uh, this is just kind of a bonus video for this week. If you're wondering where the deep dive is, because I said the next video would probably be a deep dive, that is still planned. 
uh, and it was still planned for next week. I did not have a video planned for this week. I didn't think I was going to get one out this week, um, but this had to come out at some point before the BO3 Ricky came out, and I figured now would be a good time for this video to come out. Um, but since you already made it this far to the video, I'll tell you right now, next week's video is Deep Dive 2, and the weapon I'm going over is the Gorgon from Black Ops 3. So if you're looking forward to that, cool. Um, I will try to get that out early next week, as early as, early as I can, and... The Black Ops 3 ranking, hopefully that comes out. Hopefully the Black Ops 3 ranking comes out somewhat soon. But I do want to look into a few more things before I release that video because um, there's, a, there's a couple things that I just want to make sure of. So just regarding that, um, yeah, BO3 ranking, hopefully it's out late January. I'm going to do my best to get that out. Anyways, if you guys have questions or anything, comment them. Feel free. Join the Discord. Do whatever you want. I'll, I'm open to all questions, whatever you got, as long as they're zombie related. Um, all right. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you later. See ya.